Hey, what's up guys? Mike here, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to tweak the Hellscore Mako hot plug version of Hellscore. Now, I do want to let you know that I am running a Nexus 6 with the Android M Developer Preview 1. This is the B1 T2 Mako M hot plug version of Hell's Core. So if you are using Zen, this video is probably not going to be too beneficial for you as that kernel or that variant of this kernel is basically using all four CPU cores at all times. And with my version, I basically use a dual core setup, which enables all four cores when I get to a certain threshold. And I'll explain that a little bit in the later half of this video. Right now, I'm going to show you my basic setup and what you can do to maybe get something pretty close to it. All devices are different, so you're not going to be able to achieve my exact results or settings. Just be aware of that, but I'll get you guys pretty familiarized with how you can customize this in the later half. But to show you real quickly what I use, I basically run a dual core setup, and in my maximum frequency, I don't really mess with that. I'd leave it at the stock maximum default, 2649. The CPU minimum I do downstep just slightly. The default is 300, but I go to 223. And the maximum screen off frequency, I basically half this. The default is 1190, and I go down to 652. Now you can set this lower depending on what you are doing or using your device for when the device or the display is off. Sometimes I go down to 422 or lower. It just depends on what you want preference wise. Now the CPU governor, you will get great results with interactive or conservative. The default is conservative and I get the best results with that. Obviously it does say conservative. I don't really recommend performance at all. So that's just going to enable all four cores at all times with the maximum frequency. So it's going to be a huge battery drain. On demand is kind of not really useful in my opinion, but you can try it out and see what you want. Now the schedule work queues on awake CPUs to save power, I leave that toggled and I don't really touch anything in the CPU governor turnables because obviously that is just advanced information that you shouldn't really mess with unless you know what you're doing and I don't really want to get into that. Now CPU voltage is going to be very dependent on your device so I can't really recommend anything for you. This The best way that you can figure out your undervolting values if you want to go that route is to go into the global offset and start with something like a negative 20 value. If you're bold, you can go lower. And then what I recommend is you run an 2 2 benchmark until you can run completely through this without crashing or your device rebooting. As long as you can get through an 2 2 benchmark without any errors or issues with crashing, that will be your stable undervolt value. So you can keep downstepping by five if you're going through this process without any issues. And uh, that will basically be how you can find your stable values and then you can set the apply on boot once you have found something stable so definitely don't leave apply on boot if you know you're running or testing until you find something stable now in terms of the hot plug uh, values here there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this uh, the simplest way that I can explain it in a minute after I explain my values uh, I'll go over that in just a minute but yeah but the hot plug settings I do use the CPU frequency unplug limit I put this at 2496 and what this means is with the values that I set, this is basically going to be when your other cores come online. It's going to be that interval where they just deem it necessary to unplug and unlock those other cores. And this will be dependent on your load threshold and your high load counter settings. And basically what high load counter is, is how quickly you will enable or disable your core clocks or the CPU cores to come online. So if I put this at zero, I will no longer be at a dual core setup. It will be all four cores on at all times, no matter what setting I do, because that just disables that frequency value or input setting altogether. If I put it at one, then this is gonna make it extremely quick. So if I just use very little power, it's going to enable all of my cores rather quickly, and those other cores are gonna come online. Now. This is also because I'm screen recording, so there's a lot of usage going on in the background. Obviously, if I wasn't screen recording, it probably wouldn't kick in as fast. But that's how that load counter works. Now, the default is five, and I leave mine at about three. Now, obviously, you're gonna have to come in here and tinker with it until you find something that is you know, worthy of your preferences, and it's all gonna be trial and error. But three is a pretty good sweet spot. Five, the default is also good. There's really no reason to go higher uh, you will lose performance if you go too high. Um, the max load counter down here is going to increase performance. So you're going to see here with my Antuitu benchmark results, I have a 50,000 rating. 
Uh, when I had that down at the default, now the default with the Maco Hot Plug is 20, you'll get some pretty good, pretty good numbers depending on your other values and tweaks. Uh, but I was getting about 40,000, sub 40,000 uh, points in this particular benchmark setting with the default. The more you ramp it up, the better the performance will be um, from the CPU and the processor in because it's just enabling more performance with this particular setting. But be aware, if you are undervolting, if you raise this value, you will have to um, you know, raise your undervolting. You won't be able to undervolt as much the more you increase your max load counter because it's going to require more power and more performance. So be aware of that. That's a performance setting increasement and not all devices may be able to reach the highest 50 value. So be aware of that. This is a lot of trial and error. Uh, the load threshold is basically the percentage value when you want your CPUs to kick in. And I leave it pretty high with my particular setup because I don't want the other cores online very often. Unless I'm under a very intense load or I'm playing a game, which is pretty rare, or I'm just using something that's real intensive on the core or the CPU in general. So that's my basic setup. Now, if you want to go about enabling your CPUs in different ways, the simplest way to explain this would be that if you don't want to use a dual core setup, if you want to use all four cores, then you can use the default value, which is roughly a 20% threshold, and the max load counter is 20, and this is five, the high load counter. That's basically going to be your default values. And now you're gonna see that all four cores are online at all times, for the most part. But if you want to just use a third core, or you don't want to necessarily use all four cores, but you don't want to use two, you can manually disable the fourth core by ticking that option, and now you'll have just three cores online at all times. And uh, that's the easiest way you can go about doing that. Obviously, you can go in here to your hot plug settings, ramp this back up to something like 60, and then you'll basically have, you know, your core settings again, but you won't have a three core process that way. But if you want to enable a three core process, you just have to go to a 20% threshold or lower, and then you'll basically have your clocks enabled and you can disable the fourth if you want to go that route. I mean, there's a couple different ways you can do it, but that's the easiest method if you want to use an alternate, you know, process and you don't want to necessarily use just two cores. But the performance on my particular device has been amazing. I don't have any lag whatsoever. I mean, I am recording right now and doing a lot of stuff uh, with dual core setup and I have absolutely no issues. A lot of people are, you know, posting, well, your performance must be terrible. You know, you're only using two cores or whatever you're doing to get this insane screen on time. You know, there's, there's gotta be some kind of sacrifice, but really there isn't. It, it just comes down to the proper settings and the proper tweaks. And, uh, you know, obviously I don't use GPS or anything like that very often unless I'm using maps. That will have a big impact on battery. Uh, another thing that I almost never use, uh, especially when I'm running the ROM, is ambient display. It just it sucks up a lot of battery. Even though you have an AMOLED screen and technically it's only displaying those little tiny lines between your clock and notifications, you know, when it comes on all day long throughout the day, it's eating battery. It, it takes up battery. So even just the simplest little things can eat up your battery, and that's one of them. Um, there's other little things as well, uh, depending on what applications you install. You know, obviously Facebook's going to take up a lot of uh, juice if you have background processes on and things like that. But I get great results with Android M. I get anywhere above six hours on average. And with AOS IP, I can get six and a half, seven hours pretty easily with all of the settings that I enable with that particular ROM. It's a really great ROM. Uh, but that's pretty much my settings, guys. Uh, I forgot to mention my I.O. scheduler. I do have BFQ enabled. You can put BFQ or FIOPS. And I put the read head at about 3,072. Read head's not going to make a huge difference on battery. It's just going to make it a little bit snappier. Miscellaneous controls, I leave vibration strength at 40%. That's not going to have a big impact on battery either, unless you get a lot of haptic feedback or using vibration on keyboard or stupid stuff like that. Uh, but that's pretty much my settings. I don't mess with GPU. I leave all that defaulted. That's not going to make a you know big difference on anything, really. It all comes down to your hot plug settings and your CPU usage. If you're using all four cores, it's obviously going to make 
uh, more of an impact on your battery life, unless, of course, you're a heavy user, then it might be better or more beneficial for you to have Zen. Um, if you're more of just an everyday user, you know, you're just using applications, doing simple stuff, nothing too crazy or strenuous on your uh, device, you know, you're not playing a lot of games or anything stupid that's going to take up a lot of battery power, then you're going to get great results. I mean, it's that simple. It's just common sense. Uh, if you guys are interested about this, you know, launcher I'm using, this is actually Ola launcher. Uh, I just installed it. I'm trying it out and it's, it's pretty interesting. It actually has the Android M style launcher. You know, it has your recents up here at the top, only three of them instead of four, like the uh, Android launcher, the Android M launcher, but uh, pretty similar. I actually really like the scroll here. It's not just a single alphabetical. It actually highlights multiple letters or alphabet or, you know, it's pretty cool. I actually like it. it it's a little bit different. I mean, you can scroll between. So if you make a mistake and hit the wrong drawer or folder, you can still swipe between them and even get in your app drawer. I mean, it's pretty cool. But we're getting off topic, but that's pretty much my settings um, for the Maco hot plug version of Hell's Core. If I left anything out, you guys can leave it in the comment section below. I hope this video helps you guys. I hope you found it enjoyable, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.